is there anything this year in particular that you've kind of shifted your perspective of or you know you've really struggled with um I find it really interesting because my shift started about five years ago so I have been so before that I was in I got a business I was an acupuncturist I had a busy clinic owned companies grew companies and about 2015 I had a lot of different things all come up all at once. So my sort of, I put myself into lockdown, potentially. Um, Well, no, not lockdown, that's not the right word, but things really moved for me. So in 2018, I shifted and changed from, gosh, I stepped away from my business for a couple of years. So I left the team in charge, I shut my clinic down. My partner and I separated after 20 years. My mum was diagnosed with terminal cancer, although she's doing really well. Um, And just, and I hit menopause. Oh, wow. And I was in this brain fog of not, and my soul was saying, I want to do something else. Yes. So I, so I was in that time, just, I'd, created I don't use the word burnout for myself but I'd certainly gone into that place of I was exhausted and I wasn't sure I was going around searching for the next bit looking for it I loved my practice I did fertility work and you know was hugely grateful that I was able to help so many couples have babies and I was so I'd had that trick in my mind of going you know, how can you not be grateful for this? Because this is an incredible yeah. gift to have. Um, but I knew that I wanted more. So 2018, when I couldn't work out how to work a cafetiere, <laughs> so my world crumbled, um, my partner and I, at the time, we sold our house. He bought a house. I bought a motorhome and a puppy. And went <laughs> of off course. Traveling. As you do. Yeah. So so that for me meant that I really removed myself. So I literally we sold the house. I sold everything. I mean, he's in his house. He still has my bed, my piano and there's something else at my desk, I think. But that's all that I really wow. kept apart from a box of sentimental sort of letters and things from when I've been traveling before or my dad sort of things. So I have that, but I want. I knew that my soul wanted to explore. Yeah. I knew that the shift was coming. And I'd probably been saying for about five years, just the way in which we continue to do business, like it's not sustainable. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's just not. I think, you know, the earth, mother nature, you know, humans, yeah in my opinion have this idea that we can we can evolve and sort of and have more power than nature and that's just oh. know, she's gonna kick us off if we don't start paying us some attention she's gonna kick us off in my opinion um but that for me is where the uprising for want of a better word yeah or the dismantling of our constructs in society have to shift and change and women and evolved you know and evolved men are the key to taking care of the whole yes in my opinion yes I'm so happy to hear you say that because honestly parts of that have come up but I don't really hear very often about our relationship with nature and that we are trying to control it and hope that it will, you know, we we kind of assume in our arrogance that it's going to bend to our will and every demand. And it doesn't work that way. Good Anybody Lord, no. who's ever tried to weed a garden, whether by hand or mm-hmm. by chemical or whatever, knows that ultimately nature yes. always comes back. Uh, well, we are nature. Exactly. That's what we forget. Yeah. We yeah. are absolutely nature. And... And so five element acupuncture, which is the mode of acupuncture I trained in, um, is absolutely around living in line with seasons, with, you know, the ebb and flow of everything. 
Yeah. And as I, so, and you t- we talk about rewilding and, yeah. and the more we encroach on nature, the more nature has to find ways to expand and grow. I, I just find it stunning that we have lost that connection or we choose to not see it and I can be I mean my goodness me I like certain things and I like you know to consider my you know buy things and you know consume yeah we're all part of it yeah we are just you know and and I have a real internal battle so the internal battle I have around fertility work so and I think this is something that is a thread through my life around when people want children and I don't have children I you know I wanted children I didn't become pregnant I chose my I have my own fertility journey but the conflict of how we work with people who are desperately wanting children and it's such a painful experience for people Mm. when they're not able to become pregnant because our story is we're going to get pregnant yeah really quickly yeah and then that balance of going actually we live in a full world Mm. and and because we've encroached so much on the wildness of nature it brings up things that we have to deal with yeah I, and I'm you know I I just wonder how that's going to impact us and I think humans are fascinating we are incredible in terms of how we're able to evolve and what we can create and make and learn and but we're also really insignificant yeah yeah and we forget that we're p- we're part of an ecosystem and we think we can we just think we can beat it and we can't I mean has anyone got any idea of Mm. yeah and not just that but you think about how vast you know the universe is in terms Mm -hmm. of we're just a tiny tiny speck our planet is a tiny speck in a tiny galaxy of billions of galaxies That that's what we know of you know that's as far as our knowledge extends so far as well that's mm-hmm. not yeah, yeah it's it's bonkers honestly it really really is and and having said all of that I absolutely believe that if we go inward into our internal energy system then the connection that we can have with source and yeah. with earth and everything is just beyond what our minds can even think of. Absolutely agree with that. And um, one mm. of the ways that I have um, kind of talked about these core truths is that feeling of being kind of really viscerally connected within ourselves, but also to the vastness that is Mm -hmm. you know around us and because in our everyday lives not only are we disconnected from ourselves and each other a lot of the time Mm -hmm. but we are so disconnected from everything that is you know created around us every all of creation and um and when we can connect back to that in a really deep way, it's so it's it's so life affirming, but also life changing. Yes, I'm intrigued. What you so in terms of life changing, what does that mean for you? <laughs> ah, good question. For me, it really is about shifting beyond the perception of all that we kind of assume is important every day. And especially the structures and the systems that we are are bound within. Um, And we are bound within them. Even though we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily conscious of it, or we're not not conscious of it all the time. Mm-hmm. 
we are bound within these these things that are ultimately constructs and they don't mean anything you know in in a hundred years time in 200 years time and you know however long they're they're going to mean even less <laughs> and um yeah. and for me that connection that really deep connection is about coming back to what really matters at the heart of it all and um i do believe that there are layers of this as well so we can get mm -hmm. glimpses and we can touch it you know kind of just imperceptibly almost sometimes and other times we can really kind of sink into it and i've had all of those in my life and you know more and more probably every day at the moment as well yeah sure and um It's hard though because we are part of the construct. It's that it's that balance. It's finding that balance between Jeez. being part of the world and not being part of the world. <laughs> what sure. do you feel? Um, okay, it's quite an interesting one because, of course, within the evolution of ourselves and our souls and reconnecting with our soul's purpose and um. Yeah, so there's a part for me that, first of all, I was really surprised that I thought I'd found my soul's purpose. I thought I was doing my yes. legacy. And then that shifted and changed with with menopause, with change, with whatever. Yeah. So, and what has happened for me over the last two years, but specifically in the last three months, um, is that deepening and evolving. Mm. so the last year I spent connecting working with a spiritual mentor and have been downloaded um an energy system yeah to work it's a self-practice yeah that um because I think ultimately when we talk about our own connection with source or spirit god whatever and then so that being responsible for ourselves but also then being part of a community we can only ever be responsible for how we show up for ourselves and for others. Yeah. I don't. So so there's a part for me of working on a more spiritual level, the appreciation that actually when I practice, I channel, in, I work intuitively and always have done. Um, but the other part of that is, I'm getting, and this is just happening for me in my exploration of my relationship with source, mm. with spirit, with, and I've, and separating from me as a child who grew up who went to church. Okay. Because yeah. my parents went to Church of England and, um, and what that meant to me in that I have a physical response to religion. And yeah. sermons and scriptures that in my energetic response feel really disrespectful to women yeah in the main yeah um but actually I've taken myself back into church because I love the energy of the space and that of course is a sacred space it's yeah. got all the energy of worship and the quietness that I really seek when I'm looking to create that connection within lovely and so I'm not sure that's answered your question but it's certainly evolving for me I love no I love that and I think um so a couple of things what I wanted to say as well that that feeling of sacred sacredness but also ceremony because there is a there mm -hmm. is a ceremony there is a ritual around it and I think we've lost so many of our kind of more traditional rituals of community yeah. and um connection which are yeah. now they're they're being you know they're brought out in religious kind of structures instead but i would say the more you know our more kind of traditional community our communities would have been we would have had those just as part of our everyday lives 
Of course we would. And we would have had nature yes. as part of our life. And and actually, if I'm looking at anything, because because I'm still uncertain, I still have yet to deconstruct the lessons I've learned around religious ceremony, around, you know, all the different ceremonies that we have. Mm. And yet, if we look at nature, farming, how we feed ourselves. See, this is the one of the most scary things for me about the future going forward is how we feed the number of people that we have in the world mm. and how detached we are from growing. Yeah. And yes, there's amazing medical and not medical, scientific you know, things that say we can do A, B, C and D and we can grow yeah. vegetables from whatever. But actually, we are part of the earth. We're part of the soil. We've got it within us. And unless we go back to that, then what we consume in our food feels really off. We're not connected to it. We haven't got our hands in the ground, in the soil. We haven't got, you know, the water. We're not collecting water because it comes out my dog was, won't drink tap water and there's a reason why dogs don't drink tap water yeah it's got so much chemical in it yeah yeah and there's an energetic um, as well as a biochemical there's an yeah. energetic disconnection as well is. which is actually Absolutely. i think it's profoundly um kind of under what's the word <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's really overlooked and yes. I think that's a, that's a gross mistake, you know, our, our energetic mm -hmm. connection to nature, because we are nature, we are part of it, like you say. Mm -hmm. And as, and when uh, the more that chasm grows, the greater we will suffer as a species, I believe. Yeah, yeah. If I think of it from an acupuncture point of view, so the majority of people that I saw um, were out of balance. And there's a really interesting thing about being in balance, being out of balance, or where energetically we are. Mm. But, and two of the main things that really have disconnected us from nature are electricity and windows. Oh, so windows, wow. We, yeah. So we are removed from the outside because we have windows. So we can create a bubble around ourselves in our homes. So we're completely blocked off but also we have light so we work when it's dark yeah if yeah. we look back to not that long ago if we were working we would in winter we should yeah. be hibernating yes and actually we've absolutely hibernated this winter because oh, we yeah. needed to yeah but that comes on the back of we hibernated through spring summer autumn and by winter this has been a really tough winter for people. yeah because we haven't had the harvest, we haven't had the celebration, that getting together. But if we look at our most natural, basic way of living, if we lived with the sun and the moon, you know, sunrise, sunset, if we weren't at a computer, we would be, you know, at five o'clock on a winter's evening, we'd be at home or round a fire eating. Yeah. And then we'd be going to bed. Yeah. So and my take on that with the energetic of that acupuncture is that for every time we ask our bodies to do something that isn't in line with the season or the earth or nature around us, we're creating a disharmony within our energetic system. Absolutely, yeah. I, yeah, I totally yeah. agree. So, and I could, I used a herb called moxa a lot in acupuncture, which is really nourishing to that energy, the chi, mm -hmm. the life force that we have within. Because actually, from my way of thinking, if we are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, if we're depleted in any way, shape or form, no amount of moving energy around with the needles is actually going to be helpful because I'm just moving knackered energy around the body. <laughs> yes you know that's it and we can tonif so we have different techniques in acupuncture so you tonify it you disperse it you you know but actually it needs nourishment yeah and then if we're eating a carrot that has been grown in 
soil that's just been farmed within an inch of its life and it's not been on a crop rotation or it's been gen genetically modified or however that works, then the fuel that we put into our body isn't good. In the same way, the information we take in from the many, many varieties that we have. I Absolutely. sound really evangelical and I'm not particularly, but no, I do but know. I think, it's, I think it's important to say because, you know, it's, we're very much a kind of five tips driven society of, well, if I just do these five things, my life will be radically better. Mm -hmm. And that might be true, but actually mm -hmm. so much of, of uh, what you're saying is actually we've just surrounded ourselves in such a way with all of this information that is mm -hmm. contrary to what our, what our biology and our energy actually needs. And yeah. so it's, Absolutely. it's, it's, it's ongoing. It doesn't matter what sometimes it doesn't even matter what we put back into the system because it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And in the same way. So for me, you know, the idea of burnout and it's such an overused phrase as are so many nowadays, but actually it does a disservice to those people who are truly burnt out. Mm. Burnout isn't something that you can go climb into bed for a weekend, wake up on a Monday morning and go, right, I'm good to go again. Yeah. You know, true adrenal fatigue, true chronic, you know, chronic fatigue, all those really ME, any of those um, diseases in the body take, you know, a long time to heal from. I can attest to Truly. <laughs> yeah. They really do. And I think it's, I don't think people understand the severity of the impact on their bodies or for the impact of people who are just told, pull yourself together. Oh, yeah. You know, all of it is yeah. just, it's not okay. And, and I really think that's changing in the world because not only have we got, have our bodies been overridden with inflammation and, real just that pressure of emotional imbalance yeah but now we're finding ourselves in an energy when the energy is just the vibrations changing yeah completely you know i think the universe has a real desire to dismantle all the constructs that we <laughs> put in place yeah so, you know it, we really have we're in an age when young people the shift and change is just phenomenal to watch, to it feel, is. you know. It is. And honestly, even just so to take one example that I see, um, not just in my own kids, but in their friends as well, is their incredible mm. emotional intelligence from an early Huge. age, which, you know, I couldn't have, uh, you know, at their age, my, my kids are 10 and 11 now. And at their age, honestly, mm. I didn't have a clue about my emotional kind of no. abilities or you know bandwidth or no. what any of it meant and okay. and I was it was I felt our our responses our reactions were very very different for my generation than for the current yeah. generation I just feel like they know yes. so much more and they're much more tapped in and and more oh, sensitive as a result Mm -hmm. And there's an well, there's an interesting part of that because I I'm not sure of how old you are, but I'm guessing I'm a forty-one generation, or certainly a, right. And so I'm coming up to fifty-one. So that idea of how we shift and change through the decades, yeah, and <clears throat> certainly there is such a universal shift in children's energy. But I think that of the women who were in such positions in their 30s, for example, that I think women between 30 and 45 are just so switched on and different to my generation. But what I wonder is, so my experience certainly was, I absolutely knew there was something within my understanding of emotions yeah but there weren't the 
avenues or the it just wasn't receptive in the same way that if I think of my grandmother you know and the and my mother's generation and my grandmother's generation the impact of what they had to deal with yeah it's just it's an evolution isn't it we did the best we can so yeah I, I really miss yeah. yeah I mean I miss my 30 year old self because at 30 I was studying acupuncture and running a business by 35 and like a decent business and that was in an area that was really really underrepresented at the time so it's that lead generation and yet at 50 I can sit back and go you know look at women in all that is happening in the spiritual world the personal development world the growth of that it's so so different yeah isn't it and yet there's that real acknowledgement of my grandmother dealt with what she needed to deal with in her generation my mum dealt with what she did in the best way possible and yeah. I've done the best I did the best at, with what I had at 30 yeah and I guess I'm just coming through to that part now of really taking ownership of what is now available yeah and to me as somebody who's been through an awful lot and it's just a relearning it's a relearning it's a reconnection it's a it astounds me of just if I'm in if I go within and mm. I release all the stuff just the wisdom that sits within us oh yes yeah 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 but I think I wonder if just the younger generations just much like you give them an iPad and they can all of a sudden just <laughs> I mean I don't get technology particularly but but they're astuteness and their um, speed at which they connect yeah it's fabulous yeah and I love I, seeing that in my kids you know yeah. I think what you say about you know each generation has had to do the best it can um mm-hmm. it, that really resonates because part of my story is dealing with emotional neglect and abuse um mm-hmm you know without going into it too much you know dealing with narcissism and and so on so and um and only really recognizing that in my 30s as well it wasn't like I grew up knowing it (laughs) well no but but part of me healing that was just really coming to terms with the kind of the generational stuff you know my parents had to deal with especially my mom Mm -hmm. and you know understanding how that response can come about so easily because she wasn't respected for everything she was trying to to deal with and do and and kind of break through at the time and honestly my you know although I I definitely kind of healed that healing I'm still healing it you know it's still there but um my heart bleeds for her for what she had to and what for what she still feels she has to carry as well even though Mm -hmm. times have changed yeah absolutely and it's so hard isn't it in that when you're doing your own healing work and and you can appreciate because hurt people hurt people yes I don't, I'm very much of the belief that I don't believe that people are born into this world, for want of a better word, evil. And there shows my generation, because that is what people will have been told they were. Yeah. Or the very fact that when we experience pain or our emotions aren't seen or met, if we don't feel safe and we don't feel we matter, we're working with, you know, trauma of one kind or another. But it's not, you know, it's it starts somewhere. Mm. It, but it started generations back. I'm interested just, to know what, what you, you said there about that kind of um, speaks of your generation about hurt people, hurt people. is, And yet 
So there's a great empathy in that. Huge. Do you feel that that empathy is more prevalent now or or less or? Ah, interesting question. I'm I'll tell you why I asked. It's because yeah. obviously with um, the rise of social media, um, mm -hmm. And the kind of media that we consume these days and how often and how, you know, kind of constant it is that mm -hmm. I feel that we are more polarized now than we perhaps ever were before when mm -hmm. we might have read the paper once a day or, you know, watched the news or talked to our yeah. friends, whatever. Okay. I wonder whether there is much more of a polarization now between a kind of a rising tide of empathy and on the one hand, and then a, a kind of, um, you know, you're, you're good or you're evil on the other hand. Ah, okay. I think it, mm, it's really interesting. So I can, so my experience as a child, was I always felt in the middle. So I knew intrinsically that whatever it was, the polarization felt wrong to me in my body. Same. And I trust my body, really did. It was just, you know, whenever anyone was saying nasty things about someone else and, you know, it just didn't feel right. And I would mm -hmm. go around going, why can't everyone just get in along? And I, yeah. and I don't like conflict and and that's my body and what yeah. my body tells me but I guess it's a really interesting thing isn't it around that idea because you can see hatred in the world but what happens for me with that in that polarization depending on which side you believe you know to be true mm we go into then into a blame culture of yeah. it. So that idea of, you know, hurt people, hurt people, then the it idea of labelling someone as something is actually really limiting for them. So that's like children at school being told that they're whatever. You know, we hear the messages and we then believe them. We take them on as our truth. Mm. And if I believed the truths of my teachers, and the, then I wouldn't be anywhere. Yeah. For years, I believed I wasn't smart or I wasn't yeah. able to do the A, B, C, and D. And, and it halted me for years. Yeah. But I want to go back to that idea of um, the energy of things and whether or not it's more polarized so I have so and I can use that in terms of race and my experience of racism as a white woman who has dated black men mm. for 30 odd years and the so I was with my partner who is a black man for 20 plus years mm. and the difference from the 1980s racism that was rife and the abuse that I would get for being in relationships with black men from white people was one thing and then yeah. there was a part there was a point in time in the UK it, racism has never gone away it's never shifted but it's the microaggressions within that racism that yeah you would notice just in everyday life of where we'd be where we'd go how we were greeted the difference between me being on my own somewhere to us being in a couple somewhere the looks we'd get the comments and it was more looks but then the you know 2012 was a beautiful height of the UK in all its glory with the Olympics and this wonderful inclusive opening ceremony and then before we even knew it, we were in a 2016 shitstorm of Brexit. Yeah. And Black, Life, Black Lives Matter and and the real, that real ugliness that sits within people's 
heart or the fear and ignorance that sits within people's hearts absolutely came to its forefront and and it really got vocal again the difficulty around that is that the impact of the spoken and the unspoken never mind the history mm. i mean gosh i talk about me being restricted in my belief system around how I, how clever i was at school but actually if you have a culture that is you know absolutely told yeah. it's less than them, yeah you know, it has a long lasting impact on our energetic system yeah you know it just does never mind anything else so do i see it as the the those who are empathetic those who are born in with emotional intelligence are going to you know thrive more i don't know but there's the hope isn't there that we that we have a kinder and more compassionate inclusive world I certainly or feel that would be my hope. <clears throat> I certainly yeah. feel that. I've had um I've had other parents, you know, um kind of say, I wish my children weren't so sensitive. They just, you know, they're um it's it's kind of and I get it as well, you know, <laughs> it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard, really hard. Yeah. But um but my feeling is definitely that our world needs more sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yes. so much more wow. mm -hmm. and with yeah. that I see so much more compassion as well just mm -hmm. just naturally emanating yeah. um mm -hmm. much less kind of judgment or criticism of others and much more acceptance of their peers whatever their circumstances mm -hmm. um you know when I think back to when I was at school and I mean, apart quite apart from the fact that I grew up in um like I my school was was very much all white, all um all from the same area, you know. It, never mind mm. kind of different countries. It was it wasn't even different counties. It was or like different yes. kind of towns. It was mm -hmm. you know it was very yeah. very insular and um and that that also has an effect. So when I went to university, mm. I was astounded at all the differences yeah. so yeah I'm guessing that it brought a real joy and a real expansion to your life absolutely and uh yeah. mm -hmm. so many ways but also mm -hmm. you realize the world is a lot bigger <laughs> than you yeah. previously thought but that's it isn't that thing. the yeah yeah but that's the energetic isn't it of when we're you know, from when we're a child and a baby and we rely on our parents and then we, then our family gets the extent. We just go out and out and then we go to school and we go to a small school and then we sort of get to the point in that last year at primary school, whatever the system is nowadays, yeah. where we just get ready to expand again. Yeah. And I've just done it at 50, gone from having a business in the UK, which, you know, I don't know, had, we have self-employed and employed people but had you know 50 people and it served this area or these areas mm. to going actually I'm wanting to step into the next big pond yeah and so I've gone back to being that little unknown yeah with a much bigger pond online yeah but I really I'd be really interested just to go back to the there's something that we were saying just in that moment of when we we want a more emotionally intelligent world and how that might work for the people within so sensitive sensitive children yeah but actually celebrating that yes. intuition yes. and that connection to energy is beautiful but my fear is or my concern is that we either see it as one or the other we're either sensitive or we're devoid of our connection with our emotion mm. if we're devoid of connection to our emotion it's usually because we've experienced trauma yeah in our development or you could argue that you become sensitive because you've experienced trauma but 
we're whole human beings. So yeah. the beauty of all of work within energy is the divine masculine, the divine feminine. Yeah. But what we're seeing happen now, I really believe, and I had this conversation with someone yesterday, is around that divine masculine, divine feminine within us doing what it is here to do. So the yin and the yang, yeah. that real push energy and the real being. Yeah. But we're creating that soul unity. Yeah. So it blends together in a genderless formation. Yeah. That sits within us. But that isn't around rejecting part of our human nature. So yeah, very us... much, very much. And I think um, I have to caution myself on this because, you know, I've been talking a lot recently with, with um, lots of different people about this balance between mm. the masculine and the feminine energies at the moment. And that, you know, I think you, you said earlier, you, you used the term uprising right at the beginning and that I do believe there is a, a feminine uprising at the moment and it's needed. I really believe it's needed, but that's not mm -hmm. to say that it's blacking out um, the masculine, you know, it's, I believe it's redressing a, a, an imbalance, a gross imbalance that mm -hmm. we've been living on for yes. centuries. And yeah, I think that's, but that is the, that is the caution isn't it that um when we talk about a feminine uprising that there is this mm -hmm. kind of fear that it's oh it's taking over but actually that's not the point at all um yeah it's just rebalancing ourselves and you know how we've how we've structured our mm -hmm. our kind of society yeah yeah absolutely it is and i think if you look at anything around shifts and changes in dynamics it's the um people are just afraid to let go of control yeah you know? and i think part of that is because there's just it's sheer disbelief that they that you would think of people who have been in positions of of being oppressed wouldn't want to come out with some bitterness and the idea of coming over and domination. But actually, that's not the essence of what I believe in the addressing, readdressing of the balances that we come to a much more harmonious world. Yeah. But the constructs of our language within that, even just using masculine and feminine, mm. They're constructs of, you know, language. There's an idea that one is more than the other. Yeah. And interestingly, in Chinese medicine, when we take the pulses, we have the masculine and the feminine side. So you take the pulse on the wrist, attaining to the organs in the body, yeah. not heart rate pulse. Um, and there's the idea that the masculine, the male side, should be slightly more you know slightly stronger than the other yeah. side than the yin yeah because and I used to get really I used to really struggle with that because of the language that's used because yeah. every fiber in my beer being from when I was tiny because men absolutely took my power away yeah it was and and I really believe that because I was so young when they started to behave in that way um i just it's that part of when we get an energy in our body that says that's not okay for me and so i had to really deconstruct that in the essence of yin and yang yin yang however the pronunciation for people is um because i go back to that idea that why can't everyone just get along yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> That's all I want. I just want everyone to get along. And, yeah, and I guess then for me, I just get really grateful that I've got a really compassionate heart. Yeah. And I've no idea why I have, but I have. Is that And does that compassion, um, or, or rather, maybe I should say, 
does that compassion extend to yourself and has it always oh has it no of course it hasn't <laughs> my goodness me um <laughs> it's been a journey real journey so I have had terrible mental health issues mm. so I first tried to commit suicide at 14 well wow. so which goes to show what the pain that I felt I would that well I was in it's not even that I felt I was in it I was absolutely in pain yeah. when I was 14 I couldn't make sense of the world it didn't um and it's interesting because, of course, there was a bit of attention-seeking, you're this, you're that. And and I think I continued to be in and out of mental health and wellness mm. for till I was 30, 30, 32-ish, I think. And what that looked like for me was episodes on antidepressants that helped but actually what really helped me in shifting and changing that was finding my purpose. Yeah. So for me around mental well-being, it's much like that energy. If we do things that aren't in line with what is in what is best for us, we're going against our tide. Yeah. And if you do that, it's going to create resistance in the body. And how yeah. that shows up for you will depend on what it is. Yeah. So my thing was, I knew there was injustice for me. I felt, as a 14-year-old, I felt there was injustice in the world. It didn't feel a fair place for me to be. There was a power imbalance, not in my home, you know, so my mum and my dad were really brilliant in mm. that equality with each other. Um, although, you know, my dad was in that very male way able to do what he wanted for himself. My mum, not so much. Yeah. But, but I think my own story around my mental health was until I found my purpose which came through acupuncture so having acupuncture and then training as an acupuncturist and believe and it absolutely lit my soul on fire and at that point then my emotional well-being my mental health because I had something that I really valued and I really loved yeah that worked wonders for my mental health and within that journey, so there's been therapy, there continues to be therapy, there yeah. continues to be acupuncture. Um, what that journey takes you on is it's a, it's a learning to love yourself. Yeah. When, and, and I've got, there's lots of reasons why I didn't love myself, you know, why I wanted to stop that pain. Um, within me but I guess it's just that part of you evolve mm. you shift and change I'm shifting and changing again to a I way that embraces me I wanted to come back to that what you said earlier and touched mm -hmm. on just now about your finding your purpose but then it kind of evolving and changing and um mm -hmm. I feel certainly in my own journey that I've come, it's, it's been like, um, it's not that it, it's not like the goalposts are moving for me. It's okay. that I am just gradually kind of closing in on who I really am, I suppose. Okay. As I learn mm -hmm. more about myself, as I learn about, more about my response and place my response to and place in the world and um I just I'd like to I, I wonder if that resonates with you or whether it's it, it feels different so what I noticed was when you were talking about going in 
my response in my body was that I'm going out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, which, yeah, go on. Mm. Well, just in that part of, and it's a really interesting one, isn't it? Because actually, there's an awful lot of information that comes out around we need more. So we need mm. more this, more that, more everything in order to feel more complete. Yeah. So actually, we do need to go in. We yeah. absolutely need to go in. Yeah. Because until you have that relationship, it's the intimate relationship in knowing yourself. Yeah. And understanding. So for me, the inner work and the shedding of everything that people told me I should have. So people told me that I should have a house, I should have a job, I should have a partner, I should have had children, obviously, and I should, you know, have millions of pounds in the bank. That's <laughs> yeah. what we're all striving for. Yeah. And the simplicity, I have never felt more loved or honoured or accepted as when I was off in my van, which was yeah. a battered heap of fabulousness we did that we did that too, by the way. yeah <laughs> yeah and just in the part of waking up every morning and going what is it I want to do today for me it was beautiful my relationship with my ex is just beyond anything it ever was when we were together wow we love each other deeply we're family and yet we've been able to navigate how we have what did Gwyneth Paltrow do she d something or other didn't she it, and then in, there was the, uncoupling or conscious uncoupling yeah that was it yeah yeah so we kind of did we kept we did our own version of that yeah. Nottingham yeah. style you yeah. know it wasn't quite as <laughs> LA but um but just in that part of my goodness me I was supported yeah and how beautiful is that I just I couldn't have asked for more from my friends and family or and then as I step back into where my purpose is so my so the idea of how my purpose is shifting what it feels like for me is I am just opening up to more to a deeper connection which allows a oh how do I want to put that I mean my goodness me I have intuitive gifts that I have worked with for 20 years but there is something with the opening up to accepting more yeah that just brings it to a whole new level of harmony that's what I want to call it. It's and it's and it also has no ego. And you know, and whilst I was in my twenties and worried about what people thought about me because I felt so wrong, yeah, it's really really hard to step out of ego. It is, yeah. You no, know, and and the humanness of that. So navigating what is spiritual development enlightenment connection whatever with the idea that I am a human walking on this earth mm. with my own you know I don't even like the word triggers but you know my own yeah toddling I have a tantruming toddler and I have a petulant teenager yeah and I have some really uncomfortable experience within me that I am trying to make peace with you know even just finding my voice and saying no yes and I was gifted that experience in in my van not going around Europe but I was in Yorkshire and I'd found a beautiful space to stay for the night and I was in my van on my own and with the dog and some man approached me and for years I've been talking through therapy about I wish my parents had given me the permission to say no to people, to right. men specifically, because yeah. they would cross boundaries. Yeah. From when I was 10, yeah. if not before. Yeah. So 
to my consciousness. It was certainly yeah. 10 onwards. And so I was gifted this man who came and approached me and made propositions to me. And I was able to turn around and tell him where to go. Good for you. But it, it was that mustering of courage within me that even as a, I was 40, whatever at the time, just going, am I able to say this? And I was like, of course I am. How dare he? Isn't you know, it ridiculous? Not okay. Isn't it? But then, of course, I got in my van and I got all kinds of angry because I was now going to have to move myself yeah. out of harm's way. Yeah. I was a van. He he told me he could see my van from his home. And I'm like, yeah, I need to remove myself. Yeah. But again, thankfully, I was able to get somewhere safe and I was really supported. But I just, it's that part of knowing that I'm still human and vulnerable in occasion and how I choose to look after myself, which sadly, I think this is where the younger generations get a real benefit because in our consciousness of realising how unsafe it can be for young people. Yeah. And we've not even addressed you know children's rights now because actually children and animal are the two groups that are left that haven't particularly been advocated for yeah so and although it's still you know women the me too movement and black lives matter has made some inroads into that it's still not particularly moved and shift shifted mm -hmm really if on that fundamental level if there's if there's one thing that you could say to um the children of today or if you could advocate for them what what might that be i think there is a part of really helping them to trust themselves so when we know our bodies know when something's not right yeah and we tune out from it with noise with distraction with you know pushing through that. and being told to we push really through. do it's absolutely right. yeah so that would be my wish for all young people is that they get to really be honored in their truth in what is going on in their bodies yeah children and i wish it. i wish that that was much more honored within our educational environments as well in particular gosh yes absolutely because i um, see that in, in talking about those microaggressions i see that in yeah you know kind of from from quite small things to actually quite big things that it's just that stripping away of power of you know their individual power yeah absolutely and we have you know we have a teaching system that has teachers that are disempowered yes yeah and so it's and we have communities that aren't working together the you know that a village it takes a village to raise children it yeah. really does which we've disconnected and, from um, as well yeah 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 so yeah i what is the answer but i guess that part of when we show up for ourselves and we take responsibility for ourselves then we are at least showing our children how that can be done Absolutely. Yeah. And that ensuring that we take time, you know, I really, one of my, I didn't used to believe in regrets at all. And I was involved in my partner's children growing up. So, and I'm really, when they were about 10 and 11, I really worked really hard to get the business through a particular stage mm. and I really wish that I'd spent more time at home you know I missed out on some really key stuff but again that was a, yeah. that was a 
the environment, the system that you were in. And yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. It, is it was it is. also a choice. Yeah. I think there's the part of taking responsibility of that. There was absolutely, there will have been something within that that I was avoiding, mainly, you know, boys' hormones, probably. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it, it's a really interesting thing, isn't it? If I, you know, we get, we hold on really, really tightly to what we think is going to give us status or going to give us yeah. thing. But actually, we look for security and connection. We want to know that we matter in our environment and working ridiculous hours or holding equally as damaging as doing all that work is holding on to a job that does not fulfill you. Yeah. So many people will hold on to jobs that they don't like because they... Because you know, it answers those base needs. Yeah. Yeah. But also... I don't, it creates a security of some form, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, just a fascinating conversation that could go on for yeah, days, weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Months, you know, absolutely. but um, I find it fascinating. It really is do. absolutely just, fascinating, and yeah, I yeah. think um, I think we need to we need to come back for a second instalment. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I'm always up for these conversations. My goodness me, oh, it is I, my li- it's my life's work, really. No, yes. I love it, and I I want to just really thank you again for um for coming and chatting to me, yeah. and um, it's been so deep and so heartfelt yeah. and so just profound. Where can we find you, Katie? Well, oh, <laughs> um, so I am the best place is probably Facebook or Instagram, and I'm at Katie Henry Activate. So I'm Katie with a Y and Henry with a Y. So, um, and I do have um, a company, so Activate and Advance um, dot co dot uk, all written is my website so i'll pop, I'll pop yeah. all that in the notes so that people have yeah. the links thank you okay well thank you it's i mean, it's such a real honor to come and share in these conversations really thank you oh you're welcome and i am um, yeah i definitely look forward to chatting again soon but um yeah. for now okay. have a lovely rest of your week and uh yeah and I'll, you. I'll see you soon